What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Corpse Party Book of Shadows. I almost said Let's Play. I almost said Let's Play Corpse Party another episode, but um, you can tell what's been on my mind lately. Um, in the last episode, we explored quite a bit. Shimada screwed things up quite a bit, and we are trying to find Mitsuki, but we're really failing at it. We ran into this little ghosty boy here, but uh, well, as you guys probably saw in the last episode, that didn't turn out to the best of endings. So now we're going to skip right on by. Or rather, where can we go now? I don't think we can go up anymore, so... Maybe try and head back down? I think we've explored all of the individual tiles at this point, so... So, I don't know, like, we've probably found all of the potential decomposed corpses to find. We can't go to the second wing, we can't go that far that way, we can't go that way. Maybe it's just go to the exit and try to leave? Question mark? I guess that's what we'll try to do. Oh! Nani? What the heck was that? What had just appeared in front of me? Another ghosty boy? <laughs> and because we've already gotten the one wrong end, I don't feel like this is going to lead to a wrong end, which is nice. From the looks of it, you're another victim dragged here against your will, no? Well, I'll tell you now, there's no escape from this school. There's nothing to be gained here but despair. Though, if you've got an iron will, you might be able to survive for a little while, at least. Where are we? Kibogamine Academy? Here, you should have this. It'll help keep the wandering spirits at bay, though it only works once. So take it. Get out there and fight like crazy. <laughs> Stay alive as long as you possibly can. Interesting. The spirit vanished, but lying on the floor below where it had been was a gemstone. Specifically, a violet-colored gemstone. Probably an amethyst. So I can use that to keep the wandering spirits at bay one time, huh? I guess you meant the full body ones, or would have kept him at bay, too. <laughs> Either way, with this gem, I love that they addressed that. I felt like I could actually get back to my friends safely. I was as hopeful as one could expect, all things considered. Cool, so we got the amethyst. And, uh, of course, he also said there was no escape from here, but it was my prerogative to believe what I wanted to believe and ignore what I wanted to ignore. <laughs> love that. I, I appreciate that as long as it's, you know, within reason isn't harmful to people. <laughs> um... Shout out to vaccines. Don't don't even get me started. Um. Anyways, we're supposed to head upstairs now, I believe, because we have this amethyst. We can actually get by the ghosty boy, and should be all good. Maybe I don't know. We'll go here and then maybe get a trigger a cutscene or something like that. I'd imagine that's what'll happen. So can I can I go upstairs now? Can I go upstairs, or do I just, like, Be gone, ghosty boy, amethyst. It appears to be the ghost of a young boy. Use the amethyst. I held the amethyst in front of me and approached the spirit. Be gone, evil spirit. <laughs> and incredibly, it actually worked. Both the ghost and the gem faded and disappeared. The stairwell was now free to be traversed. Perfect. Now we can head upstairs after not finding Mitsuki. Only to find more death. Yikes. Uh oh, this music makes me seem makes it seem like it's gonna be a bad ending. Emmy, are you okay? There was like a ghost at the bottom of the stairs. Where's everyone else? Come on, we have to get Katayama situated and get out of here. Kizami killed them all. Emmy's face was absolutely wrecked with tears, and she was shaking her head violently. She wanted to tell me something, but the words just weren't coming. I had a really bad feeling about this. I ran past her to the bathrooms, to where Kadayama was being lifted onto Yuya's shoulders when I left. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I can't imagine this turning out very well. Why? Kadayama was back on the floor, right where we'd set him down when this whole ordeal began. Why wasn't he on Yuya's shoulders? What was going on? I had an inkling, but I didn't want to believe it, so I pushed it out of my mind. Huh? Yuya, what are you still doing here? We, we need to get Katayama ready to go! He didn't make it. What? Look, 
right after you left. He let out a huge scream, and then he just went limp. No. Yikes. I didn't know what else to say. A person had just died, and not some stranger, but a person I knew, a friend. It was the strangest feeling. I kept looking at him and thinking, is he really dead? Is this really what a person looks like when he dies? Seeing him like that drained every last bit of energy I had in me. I fell to my knees, thoroughly defeated. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Now what's going on? Yikes. Okawa-kun says he isn't moving from Katayama's side. So what are we supposed to do now? This music, though. I feel like at this point, if Olka was not going to leave Katayama's side, then it's basically committing to you know the death of the both of them. Like, take who's willing to leave and try to leave. Emmy and I couldn't stay near the body. We'd gone down to the second floor where we picked a corner and just stood there, trying to recompose ourselves. Not a bad plan, admittedly. Yuya elected to stay with Okawa on the third floor. I guess to try and break him from his shock and help put some distance between him and Katayama. Or kill him, you know. None of this felt real. Or maybe I just didn't want it to be real. It was a nightmare. It had to be. I'd just sit up in my bed and it would all be over. If only. Why did this have to happen? I'm not waking up. I don't get it. Hmm? I'm not waking up. I keep trying to tell myself this is all just a dream, but... Toko. Aww. My energy was waning again. I sank to the ground, landing on my knees. Emmy followed my lead and put an arm around me for comfort. A friend had just died. He just died. God, why? Here comes Kizami? Question mark? Emmy and I looked at each other. We both heard them. Footsteps coming down the hall. It was too dark to make out who it was, but the gate was decidedly male. The two of us slowly and quietly rose to our feet, hid around the corner and peeked out, both terrified and curious as to whom or what we might see. Is it Kizami? There, at the end of the hall, the figure finally came to view. It was a tallish man, unsteadily teetering as he slowly strode towards us. It was Shimada, drenched from head to toe. <gasps> no, 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 don't say anything, don't say anything! Ah, Shima! Da? I mean, shot forward, intending to run toward him, but I grabbed her arm and held her back without even thinking about it. She turned and looked at me with a puzzled expression. I can't handle him. What? Don't tell me he did something to you. No. Thank goodness, at times like these especially, we really need to keep each other in the loop about everything that happens. I don't know if I trust this Shimada guy anymore. Well, I mean, I definitely don't trust him. But I feel like specifically because he went outside and is back now, he's either possessed or something like that. She looked back at me again as she said this, staring right into my eyes in an almost disciplinary manner. It was the perfect guilt stare. I couldn't help but succumb to it, feeling bad for not having filled her in about the Shimada incident. But, like, there's been a lot going on. Yeah. He's gonna look definitely off. Shimada continued his slow, wet walk down the hall. Then, all of a sudden, for no discernible reason, he simply fell forward, landing hard on his knees. Something was wrong with him, and while I loathed the man, I didn't want to see him suffer. I mean, I were both poised to rush to his aid. When other figures randomly began appearing all around him, figures of children, blue and ethereal, shimmering with their own light. Yikes. <laughs> what? What are they?
We could barely even see Shimada from our vantage, any, our vantage point anymore, as his body was obscured almost completely by the backs of these ghost children. He wasn't moving, though, so it didn't seem like they were doing anything to him. Yet. But then, he wasn't moving at all, which seemed highly suspicious. It occurred to me that maybe we should try to save him. Uh-oh. I inched forward. He was still in exactly the same position he had been when he fell to his knees. He literally hadn't moved at all. Was he unconscious? I mean, I looked at one another and nodded. It was a silent signal to move forward and do whatever we could to help. Uh-oh. I can't imagine this turning out too well. The children vanished as we approached, revealing a horrific sight. She a stomach had been flayed wide open. He was dead. Yikes. The knife he'd flaunted earlier was jutting from the wound. It was an almost ceremonial death, like that of a samurai who'd thrown himself on the sword. Understandably a bit upset. No, no. What were those children? How how should I know? And they might still be nearby. Yeah, you better you better get out of there. Kizami-kun, it's horrible. Shimada, Shimada is. Yu Yang, who would presumably rush down to see what was wrong, calmly walked over to Shimada's body. He was checking for signs of respiration or pulse. He turned back to faces again a moment later, and his facial expression said it all. Why is Kizami not talking at all? Shimada really was dead. I was beginning to lose it. I just couldn't take any more of this. My friends and acquaintances were dying, one by one. I guess I should say, had died, but it didn't seem like it was over. Not by a long shot. Okawa, or Katayama died. Shimada died. Okawa was staying with Katayama. We lost Mitsuki. It's just Yuya, or Kizami, Emi, and Kirisaki, really, at this point. We know Kizami. <laughs> and we know things don't turn out so well for Emi and uh, Kirisaki. This is bad. There's something in here with us. Something that's trying to kill us. Heck, it was doing more than trying, it had already succeeded twice over. I was scared, I was paranoid, I was shaking and crying and screaming inside, I was deathly afraid that something else would show up, and then it did. Uh oh, what is this thing that shows up? <gasps> it's Sachiko herself, it was a little girl in a red dress, standing between us and the third floor staircase. I couldn't make out the expression on her face through her bangs, but I could literally feel the hatred in her eyes as she stared into our souls. Then she turned around and slid up the staircase, into the third floor hallway. Yikes. I like that this is getting, you know, pretty tense for, for potentially the ending. What's... Amy was turned the other way, so she hadn't seen the girl at all. She eventually followed our gazes, but by the time, the girl was gone. She looked confused. That particular apparition looked a lot different from the other ghosts I'd seen. But there was still no doubt in my mind, she was definitely a ghost. What do we do about Okawa-kun? We have to go get him. We have to get out of this school, now. I'll go call him down. Uh-oh. Wait! Kizami finally says something. Yuya, I'll come with. It could be dangerous. You wait here. Dangerous? Well, that is the direction the girl in the red dress went. And I guess Yuna didn't want me to play want me to be put in harm's way. I nodded and watched his back recede in the darkness as he chased after Emmy. Uh oh. Can't imagine this turning out too well. What's taking him so long? Pull yourself together. Pull yourself together, Tolko. You know what they say, no weapon can pierce a calm heart, if only. So, what's the most important thing right now? Yikes, apparently helping Emmy now. Yikes. What was going on? Why was Emmy screaming? I could hear voices now. Emmy and Okawa were having a heated argument. Huh? 
That's not possible, we have to leave him and run, we'll get caught if we don't. Seriously? No, we can't just leave him behind, we have to, we have to take him to a hospital, he's dead. He's dead. But he's dead. No, he's not. He's dead. He's not. Can't be. Leave Okawa behind. He's as dead as Katayama at this point. Leave him and run? We'll get caught? That ghost girl must have been pursuing them. <sighs> this is bad. I have to go help them. I don't know how much help we can really be at this point, but. Uh, what the? Murderer? Huh? Katayama's body was sprawled unceremoniously on the landing halfway up the third floor along with Okawa. At the top of the stairs stood Emi and in front of her Yuya with an imposing skull on his face. Did Kizami just like throw him on the stairs or something? I didn't understand any of this. What had just happened? Huh? Emi let another scream and came running toward me down the stairs. Okawa then seemed as if he'd fallen and broken his arm. He was lopsidedly crawling towards me. It was almost, almost as if he were trying to distance himself from Yuya. I ran to the base of the stairs to meet up with Emmy. I needed some sort of context here. Emmy, what happened? What's going on? Run! Run away! You'll be killed! Huh? He's on me. Kicked him down the stairs out of the blue. What? I glanced up at Yuya, but his face was shrouded in darkness. I couldn't make out any expression at all. I wonder if this is to indicate he had been possessed, or if he just like cracked, you know, like of his own volition per se. Okawa seemed to have reached his breaking point. He shot to his feet and took off behind me toward the second floor as fast as he could. Yuya kicked Okawa down the stairs? Why? Yuya, it's not true, is it? Slowly, he walked down to the landing. He was neither concerned nor scornful. His face was a blank slate. As soon as he reached my level, he bent down and began fiddling with Katayama's body. Raising the arms, then letting them drop. Wiping blood from the ears and nose, then looking at it as if studying a specimen under a microscope. Uh-oh. Kizami's correct, boys! <laughs> what the heck? He was enjoying this! I finally got to see an emotion written clearly on his face. And it was elation? How is this not some crazy dream? Tears began spilling from my eyes like water. I was shocked, confused, and I don't even know what else. Toko, get away from him! Hurry! Yikes. Now they gotta run from Kizami as well? Not only did they lose Kizami as a resource per se, but now they gotta run away from him too? Yikes. I mean, I found ourselves standing in front of the door to the school infirmary that's going to be locked. <laughs> she might have took the key and lost it, so this room is no good. Uh oh. If we hid in a place like that, we'd be sitting ducks anyway. We, we need to go farther down, to the first floor. The poor girl was frantic. I can't say I blamed her, but, well, something about this whole situation just didn't feel right to me. I mean, I'm still not sure we need to run. I'm still not sure I believe this all. Huh? What? Oof. I believe it. <laughs> I certainly believe it. I just don't believe Yuya, kind sweet Yuya, would be capable of something like that. But he really did kick him down the stairs. It happened. He 
kicked Okawa? How can that possibly be true? I mean, you're welcome to go back to Kizami and find out yourself. Fine, do what you want then. I don't care anymore. Yikes. This is what always happens. The friends fight, split up, and then they both die. With that, Emmy pushed me out of the way and ran past me toward the stairwell leading to the first floor. I have nothing more to say to you. You wouldn't believe me anyway, since you're convinced I'm lying. Or I'm lying. And off she went. I was now separated from every one of my friends. But was I really in danger? I mean, I, I was, but from Yuya? That just didn't seem right. Or more likely, I didn't want it to be. I wanted to believe that this was all a misunderstanding. My legs were shaking and my head was swimming. I just stood there, unsure of where I should go or what I should do. Until he arrived. And then there he was, right behind me. And in his hands was Shimada's huge knife, the one that was last seen jutting from Shimada's stomach. It was still dripping with blood. <laughs> this definitely made matters more complicated. How could I doubt Yuya's guilt while, well, when he was holding something like that? Why did he even have it? How could he possibly bring himself to pull a knife from his friend's lifeless corpse? But I wasn't going to run. I turned around and I braced myself. I opened my mouth, intent on discussing this rationally. If I ran away now, I felt like it would all be over. There would be nothing left to save, no one left to trust. But what could I possibly say to him? Are you alright? My body was still visibly shuddering and I doubt I'd have much of a voice if I tried talking. But I just wanted this all to be a horrible mistake so badly. I knew I had to say something. I knew I had to get through to him. Maybe he was just freaking out in his own way. This whole experience had been taxing for all of us. And Yuya's only human. He must have been terrified. I think the option I chose is the only one that isn't immediately criminalizing her. Um, or like, you know, implying that it's his fault. And maybe I could help him get through it. Get him to talk about what's bothering him and feel a little better. It was worth a shot, at least. Y Yuya, are you alright? Kirisaki. Kirisaki, do you know where Urabe and Okawa are? Huh? Um, why? No answer. He just started muttering to himself and slowly walked right past me as if I weren't even there. Yuya! What are you doing? What do you have in your hands? I thought I could put it to good use in a lot of ways. Just what Shimada said. <laughs> it's well, well done, well done. Stop this! Get rid of that thing! No. I couldn't let this go on. I grabbed him by the arm and just clung to him, putting my full weight on his body to keep him from going any farther down the hallway. He was at a crossroads, about to walk down a path of no return, and I wasn't going to lose the kind, considerate Yuya I'd fallen for. Unfortunately, the only tools I had at my disposal were from for stopping him were my feelings, and those just weren't going to be enough. <gasps> Yikes. I was so startled that it took me a moment before I'd even figured out what happened. It's the same in here, you know. That was the first time in my entire life that I'd ever been punched in the head, and he put everything he had into it. Getting killed by this school, or getting killed by me? I couldn't focus, my brain was still rattling inside my skull from the impact. Or getting killed by me, I knew it. The world was spinning. I looked up at him with spasmodic, twitchy, tear-filled eyes. There was no sign of remorse or compa compassion whatsoever. He looked like a feudal warrior, clutching his sword and staring down at the enemy. His area all- the area all around my eye was throbbing, it hurt so badly and felt so swollen and sore, I couldn't even imagine what it must have looked like. And he wasn't done with me, he got in closer and closer, grinning unnaturally as he raised his fist for a second strike. Yikes. Let's test this out on you, shall we? You can be the first. Uh-oh. Out comes the knife, I'd imagine. I was running on pure instinct and adrenaline at this point. I shot to my feet and just forced them to carry me to safety. Somewhere. Anywhere. Did he get a- did she get away? He was going to kill me. He was really going to kill me. God. I 
I felt something rattling around uncomfortably inside my mouth, so I spit it out into my hand. It was white, a tooth. <laughs> a single white tooth with blood red highlights at its root. I wonder why this chapter is called Tooth Guys. <laughs> that maniac had actually knocked out one of my teeth. God, my... my tooth! He was there, just behind me. I panicked, tripping over my own feet and stumbling to the ground on the landing between the first and second floor. I'd fallen on my backside, dropping my tooth on the ground next to me. I began slinking away from the encroaching figure of Yuya Kizami. Save me! Somebody! Anybody! God, please! I was scooting backwards across the floor, too stiff, sore, and scared to stand, but then my hand brushed across something small and metallic. A key! Is this the infirmary key? Ah, it's the infirmary key that Shimada lost! Even with my hand right over it, I was shaking so badly that I could barely work my fingers to get a grip. It was the most frustrating feeling in the world, and for a few seconds, that felt like hours, I just kept trying in vain to pick up that darn key. Finally, the music completely cut out. I slipped my finger through the ring. I had it. This was my one and only chance. Scrambling to my feet, I somehow slipped past Yuya and ran back up to the second floor as fast as I could force my shaky legs to carry me. I had the key. I could lock myself in. I could hide in the infirmary. I could lock myself in. Those are never words you really want to hear in a uh, corpse party. <laughs> Kizami didn't pursue, not right away, he just stood there, staring. Staring at the tooth that I dropped on the ground. Staring intently, as if trying to make out what he was seeing. Her tooth? <laughs> what? He's eating her tooth? What? Kizami, come on, man. I know you're like kind of crazy and twisted and everything, but why are you eating her teeth? What? Kizami. I'll let you guys sit with these sound effects. Yikes. I like this music. Is everything... what? It looked like everything was upside down for a moment. I was like so confused, but... We're finally in the infirmary. I, I really hope... I like Loki really hope this game finishes off with the infirmary. I feel like it'd just be so poetic. <laughs> there didn't seem to be any way to lock the door from the inside. I need to find a hiding place before Yuya showed up. In the corner of the room? Under the bed, maybe? I was scanning every inch of the room as quickly as possible, sizing on my surroundings. My eyes stopped on one of the medicine shelves. Scissors! There are scissors in there! It felt like such a revelation, like the answer I was looking for. But what was I going to do with scissors? Fight back? Was I going to fight? Fight who? Yuya? I wouldn't stand a chance. You stand a better chance than without, without the scissors, at least. I decided to leave them there. I stepped back and crouched down behind the partitioning screen that was set up in the middle of the room. Huh? Oh no. Oh no, they're running into Sachiko, so they're not meeting too much better of a fate. There's a ghost girl in a red dress coming! Urabe had run back to the bathrooms on the third floor to warn Okawa about the imminent threat that was approaching. Unsurprisingly, he was still crouched on the ground, cradling Katayama's lifeless head in his arms. And he was still stubbornly insistent that if he were to leave that spot, he'd have to carry Katayama with him. Mario, That's not possible, we have to leave him and run, we'll get caught if we don't. Did we already see this event? No, we can't just leave him behind. We have to. We have to take him to a hospital. But he's dead. 
He, no, he's not dead. He's dead. He's not dead. He can't be. Yeah, we've already read this conversation. What a stubborn, foolish man I'd had. I'd had enough. And I said I'd rip Kadiyama's body from Okawa's arms and kick it down the stairs. Interesting. It made one heck of a thud when it hit the landing. But he was already dead, so what did it matter? As long as it helped get Okawa moving, I didn't care. Oh. See, look, he's dead, so get your butt off the floor and run. Open your eyes. Katayama's dead. We have to get out of here now. So this is like a bit of a window into what happened before, you know, everything we just saw as uh, Toko. <laughs> Kizami. Urabe was looking at me, then at Katayama's body, then back at me, as if she couldn't make up her mind, which was more interesting. Oh, are we playing as Kizami right now? But why was she looking at me? Did I have something on my face? Okawa, on the other hand, was focused squarely on Katayama. He was trembling all over, but I thought he finally understood. Then he turned toward me and... <laughs> yelled like a madman and ran down the stairs toward his friend's body. He wasn't exactly in the right mind, however, so those last few steps didn't quite go as planned. He tripped and fell quite hard next to Katayama. Huh? Wait a minute, so Kizami didn't actually kick him? And then is, is Emmy just trying to play it off that Kizami did that, or what? Emmy, what happened? What's going on? Murderer? Who? Me? But Kizami hasn't even done anything. I wasn't the one who killed Katayama. So the same event from a different perspective. I see. In here... Getting killed by the school and getting killed by me are one and the same. We're all going to die here either way, after all. So, Kizami didn't even do anything, got pinned for this essentially murder, and in a sense, that led to him thinking, it doesn't matter how you die, I might as well do this. Interesting. An anecdote from Byakudan High. So that was Tooth. That was Tooth. I actually like that chapter quite a bit. There's no... Oh, are we treated to something at the end? Corpse Party Book of Shadows. Yeah, I guess we have completed the game, guys. That's the end of Book of Shadows. This music is so not fitting for Corpse Party. Is this like the credits? Wow. All right, so I guess let's talk about Corpse Party um, Book of Shadows. I can talk a bit about more with Chapter 7 later, but overall, Chapter 7 was really good. Overall, I liked Corpse Party... Oh, wait a minute. This is a this is a remix of Shangri-La. Oh my goodness, I love Shangri-La. Um, okay, back to my thoughts on the game as a whole. Overall, I liked it. I think I went in with different expectations of the game, and that kind of hurt my initial impressions of the game. I initially thought this was going to be a sequel to Corpse Party, uh, you know, Blood Cover, Tortured Souls. I thought it would be another story, another adventure for the group of characters we had come to love. It would be something like that. And I think the first couple chapters even led me in that direction. You know, talking with Naomi and uh, her whole story about like, oh, you'll see some experiences in like the future, in the past. And I thought it was gonna be sort of like a time travelish getting caught in this like infinite loop of corpse party events and trying to figure it out. But in reality, it's kind of like DLC. It's kind of like an add-on, like extra content from the first game. Different perspectives of the same events. Um, providing perspectives from characters that didn't get the chance to have that character development. Alternate routes, what if this happened, what if this happened. And a little bit more of a, a peek into the universe, the characters, their relationships with each other, the environment of, you know, Heavenly Host in general. Some of the students that aren't just are, you know, I don't even remember what it's called now. It's not Kivogamine, obviously, and it's not Heavenly Host. Um, I forget what their actual school is called, but it's not just our main Corpse Party cast. We also got to see a lot of Byakudan High's cast. So, I think with that mindset, and knowing that that was what it was going to be going into the game, which was really, you know, after chapters 4 and 5, I think that really improved my overall experience with it. Um, not really kind of changing my expectations for it. And I think it did it pretty well. I think that 
what this game did really well was character development. It really did a good job of giving personalities and characterization to characters that didn't quite get the chance to in the previous game, like Mayu, Naho, Yui Sensei, um, Chapter 7 Clear, a lot of Byakunan High, the prologue, Blood Drive chapter is now playable, Soulful Testimonies unlocked in bonus menu, interesting, so we've gotten all the data and everything like that. I'll briefly talk about future plans for the series because there will be bonus episodes, don't worry. Um, after we talk briefly about the game as a whole, but yeah, we got a lot of characterization. Um, you know, even Mayu, of course, and Yuka, it was a lot of focusing on the characters that weren't, you know, the big names from the first game, like Ayumi or Nami and Seiko or Satoshi. Uh, and so I think it was really cool in that sense. I think in the beginning, um, it was a little bit too fan service heavy, which definitely faded out, you know, after the first few chapters, which was really appreciated. I think the gameplay is pretty lacking. I like the first game's a little bit more active gameplay, more real-time continuous, not like, uh, like broken up little segments of, oh, here's one thing, click a few buttons, go to another screen, you have to wait to get there, and then it loads, and then you just scroll around the screen for a moment, and then have to click on another, you know, uh, tile. I don't really like that gameplay at all, to be honest. <laughs> um, Especially when, at most, there were only like a few things to actually inspect on the screen. So, I don't know, I wouldn't really... I hope future games don't adopt that sort of gameplay. Because uh, I don't really think it is very engaging for the uh, player. I think some of my favorite moments were when there were these longer bursts of, or bursts of story. I don't think I can really point to any time in the gameplay that I really enjoyed. I think, I guess... Uh, well, that's more so talking about like the kind of tile transitions and all. The one part I did like about this game from a gameplay standpoint is the decision trees. When there were the moments where it was like, oh, like, what do you want to do? Do you want to do this or this? And that it actually has an impact on the overall route. I think that was really cool and they are more or less 50-50s because Course Party throws in a lot of curveballs, a lot of random variables and like things you wouldn't be able to anticipate how certain characters are going to re react or how whatever ghost it is you're trying to run from is going to intercept you or whatnot. But it is still fun to think about it and make it a bit of a mental exercise if you want to and then see what the result is. So I actually like those sorts of decision trees. I think this game at least towards the end, was really good at getting you back into Heavenly Host. Um, oops. Music, come back. That's another thing. The music is good when it happens, but it's not there enough. The game fades away, or the game music fades away so quickly, but when it's there, it's really cool. So I like the music that's in the game, it's just not there enough. That's definitely something I uh, was annoyed by throughout the, the course of the game. I think if we go to the options, we can see, of course, ending list. We have, oh, there's essentially an eighth chapter now. That's really cool. That's really cool. Blood Drive. Maybe, is it a prologue for the Blood Drive game? By the way, I will be playing through Blood Drive at some point on the channel, so look forward to that. Um, there's no, probably no, no surprise there, but what else is there to talk about? What else is there to talk about? If I had to pick a favorite chapter, I don't know if I would go with one off the top of my head. I liked Mayu's a lot. I really liked Yui Sensei's. There wasn't a lot of gameplay in that one, except for the decision trees. And I think the Yui Sensei's like romance relationship sort of story was really brightening. Not something I expected from Course Party at all, and turned out to be really cool. I'll have to really think back on which chapter was my favorite. And I'll get back to you guys on that. I do think that this game and all of the extra character development it did provide challenged, you know, what are my favorite, or which are my favorite characters. I'm leaning towards Mayu at the moment, actually, just from seeing how she interacted with the whole crew, uh, rather than Seiko, who was my favorite character from, you know, the first game. And we didn't really get a lot more development from her, or what development we did get wasn't much deeper than it was in the first game, so I can't really say um, much on that front. Let me know what you guys thought of the final chapter and what you guys think of the game as a whole. I know it's clearly not done. I guess I will make a chapter 8 video. I don't know if to consider that like a bonus or whatnot. I'll probably just continue on and then we'll reevaluate if things change at all on my opinion on the game as a whole between this and Blood Drive. Let me know if Blood Drive is actually a Book of Shadows chapter or if it's a preview of the Blood Drive game. I really would like that distinction if you guys are able to provide that. So. 
yeah, um, I guess thank you guys so much for your continued support on this series. I know it's not the most popular series on my channel, but it is fun when you guys do leave your comments on the different thoughts, all the random things I talk about while we're exploring the halls, and your thoughts on the characters and how the story is being developed, because Corpse Party is pretty um, divisive in that sense. Uh, you know, it's plot developing techniques, how it kind of bounces around everywhere. I'm a little bit sad that the story didn't really come together in one cohesive like, you know, chapter to chapter being tied together, large plot, but each of them in its own contained world was still fairly interesting. So I overall had a positive experience with it. And yeah, now I feel like I'm just rambling at this point. I always feel sad when we get to the end of a game, but I'm glad that we do have, you know, chapter eight and we do have these bonuses. Let's take a look at what these bonuses are. I haven't even really looked. So um, review progress or unlucky, 100% of the game's bonus features. So what are we at? Album 68.7%, cast interviews 89 point. So we've still got quite a bit to look through. So it looks like we've got a gallery of spirits. Oh, this is really cool. So we can actually look at all of the art from the game. That's really neat. I should go through this sometime. Would you guys want me to go through this again and we can look through and maybe see what some of like the best art is from this game thus far? That's really cool. And it tells you which ending it's from or which type of playthrough it's from. That's really neat. I appreciate that a lot. <laughs> no image? Hold up. I saw no image in there. That means there's still an image we have to find. Well, sure enough, I will probably, probably, given it's not going to require a ridiculous amount of work, go through and try to find all of these images. Yeah, because there's an image we're missing there, and there's an image we're missing here from Tooth, it seems. So, yeah, we've got quite a bit to look through. This is from the very beginning, right? Yeah. So it seems we're missing two images. Huh. I'll have to find those. What are the cursed phonograph? Listen to the music tracks heard in-game thus far. Oh, this is really cool. I really like when games do this. When they... Wait. There's still music I haven't heard? How have I not heard some of the music? Or is it that just that I haven't unlocked them? Twinkle Girls. Oh, I remember. Wait, is there art associated with it too? Huh. That's really cool. This is These are really neat modes. Soulful testimonies. Listen to commentary from members of the game's voice cast. Listen to and create conversations using any of the game's binaural 3D voice files. Interesting. That's actually really funny. I don't know why we don't have it unlocked though. We probably gotta unlock other stuff. Okay, so it doesn't seem like there are even really extra chapters in this game. Um, like extra chapters from like the first game. So it looks like our only bonuses are going to be chapter eight and then I'll see if I can lock every unlock everything and we can go through those sorts of extras um, for a bonus episode. Let me know if you guys are looking forward to that and let me know if there's anything I'm missing regarding unlocking extras that you think I already missed out on and should go back and look at. Um, this is a good time to do so, especially if it's not, you know, like a big spoiler about like a big story event or something like that, given we've already played through all the chapters, so. Anyways. Thanks a ton. I'll see you guys in the next episode. But until then, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.